Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Size Med, where we talk about quick, bite-sized concepts in basic medical sciences for study and rapid review. This video is on alveolar ventilation and the alveolar gas equation. The breathing cycle involves taking air into the lungs, that's inspiration, and breathing it out, expiration. The purpose of pulmonary ventilation is gas exchange. Oxygen diffuses into the capillaries and carbon dioxide diffuses out. The oxygen reaches the tissues and the carbon dioxide gets breathed out. The air that moves into the lungs per minute is called the pulmonary or the minute ventilation. It's the product of the tidal volume and the respiratory rate. But this includes dead space where there's no gas exchange taking place. The alveolar ventilation rate is the rate at which this air reaches the alveoli per minute. So the dead space has to be removed. It's the tidal volume minus the dead space volume into the rate of respiration. So oxygen moves from the alveolar air into the pulmonary capillaries. Carbon dioxide formed from cellular metabolism moves from the capillaries into the alveolar air. The alveolar carbon dioxide can be predicted with the alveolar ventilation equation. It's that the alveolar ventilation is equal to the rate of carbon dioxide produced into K, which is a constant, over the alveolar carbon dioxide. So if we rearrange this equation, we get the alveolar carbon dioxide is equal to the rate of carbon dioxide produced into the constant over alveolar ventilation. K is a constant at 863 millimeters of mercury adjusted for temperature and pressure. So the alveolar carbon dioxide depends on two things, the rate of carbon dioxide produced from metabolism and the alveolar ventilation rate, which is for carbon dioxide elimination. If the rate of carbon dioxide produced is constant, then the alveolar carbon dioxide depends on alveolar ventilation rate. And this relationship is inverse. So when the alveolar ventilation increases, the alveolar carbon dioxide drops. And if there's low alveolar ventilation, there's higher alveolar carbon dioxide. The capital A is for alveolar carbon dioxide. The small a is for arterial. Both alveolar and arterial carbon dioxide levels are equal because carbon dioxide equilibrates between the alveolar air and the pulmonary capillary blood, and so even systemic arterial blood. So arterial carbon dioxide can be a substitute for alveolar carbon dioxide. And when the alveolar ventilation increases, even the arterial carbon dioxide falls. This makes sense because with an increased alveolar ventilation rate, there's removal of more carbon dioxide from the capillary blood. So the arterial carbon dioxide falls. So that was carbon dioxide. But what about oxygen? Alveolar oxygen can be predicted by the alveolar gas equation. It's that alveolar oxygen is equal to the FiO2 into the atmospheric pressure minus the water vapor pressure minus the alveolar carbon dioxide over the respiratory quotient. So the FiO2 is the fraction of oxygen in inspired air, which is usually 21% or 0.21. The atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. The water vapor pressure is from inspired air getting humidified in the respiratory passages. That's 47. So this whole thing becomes 150 usually. Minus alveolar carbon dioxide over the respiratory quotient, or the respiratory exchange ratio, which is the ratio of carbon dioxide produced to oxygen consumed, respiratory exchange. This is usually 0.8. So alveolar oxygen is equal to 150 minus alveolar carbon dioxide over 0.8. Normally, the alveolar carbon dioxide is 40 millimeters of mercury. So if we put that in this equation, we get 150 minus 40 over 0.8, or 100 millimeters of mercury. So at alveolar carbon dioxide of 40 millimeters of mercury, the alveolar oxygen is 100. So when alveolar ventilation increases, the alveolar carbon dioxide will come down and the alveolar oxygen will increase. 
This equation on its own isn't used much, but what is used is the alveolar arterial gradient. That's the difference between alveolar oxygen and arterial oxygen. So it checks diffusion of oxygen from the alveoli into the pulmonary capillaries, and if there's equilibration. So now we have the formula for alveolar oxygen. If we put that into this equation, we get 150 minus alveolar carbon dioxide over 0.8 minus the arterial oxygen. So at complete equilibration, it'll be close to zero. There'll be no difference between the alveolar oxygen and arterial oxygen, but that's ideal. Normally, it's age over 4 plus 4. So when does this gradient increase? When the arterial oxygen is lower than the alveolar oxygen. This increase can happen in some cases of hypoxemia. Hypoxemia is a low arterial oxygen versus hypoxia, where there's reduced oxygen delivery or utilization by tissues. In hypoxemia, the AA gradient could be normal or increased. Normal is seen in high altitude, where the alveolar oxygen is low and the arterial oxygen is also low, but there's an equal drop because diffusion is fine, so the gradient is normal. The AA gradient increases when there's normal alveolar oxygen but low arterial oxygen, so there's low blood oxygenation. This can be seen with diffusion defects, ventilation perfusion mismatch, and right-to-left cardiac shunts. And that is the alveolar gas equation and the AA gradient. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.